scoops. Hey, if the developers of the Tex Murphy Pandora Directive 25th Anniversary Remaster want to give us inside scoops as to what's going on with the game, we say yes and we say thank you. And that's what we're doing today. We have Matt, who is from Big Finish Games, who is developing the Pandora Directive. He's going to give us inside scoops, a whole bunch of stuff that has not been released to the public. Also, he's going to tell us exactly what happened and why Big Finish Games pulled out of their part in releasing the Poison Pond. So, put on your fedora, put on your trench coat, we're going to get to the bottom of what's going on with Tex Murphy. So let's get started. Welcome back or welcome front if it's the first time joining us. I am Joshua with Weird Gaming Adventure and AdventureGamers.com and today we're excited to put on our fedora because we're talking Tex Murphy. There's all sorts of Tex Murphy news coming out and who better to discuss that than with Matt of Big Finish Games, creator of Tex Murphy. Welcome Matt. Hello, it's good to be here. It is fantastic to have you. Matt, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I actually started out uh, as a fan of the Tex Murphy series. I played Under a Killing Moon when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. Tex Murphy was the entire reason I got into this industry in the first place, both visual effects and game dev. So when they put together the Kickstarter campaign, I basically contacted them via the Tex Murphy forums, unofficial TexMurphy.com. Big shout out to James Lamozzi mm -hmm. for managing that community for so long. And I said, hey, you know, you guys are the reason I got into this industry. You want some help with the Kickstarter campaign? And then I guess the rest is history. When that was successfully Kickstarted, they said, uh, you want to come out to Salt Lake City here and help us make the Text Murphy series? So it was a childhood dream come true. And here I am now working on it. That is, uh, that's absolutely incredible to hear. So let's get to, let's get to some news. Like I mentioned in, in the outset, there's all sorts of, of Tex Murphy news some not so great news as of now and then some wonderful news let's tackle the awesome news 25th anniversary of pandora directive we are so excited you told us you folks told us we're gonna get a remastered game it's your anniversary but you're giving us gifts what can we expect with the remaster well, you know, first of all, sort of let me go back to when this kind of uh, the genesis of this idea is because about almost a year ago now, um, Chris Jones comes into our office and he says, I feel like playing uh, some Tex Murphy games. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. And of course, I'm never going to uh, say no to the opportunity to play Tex Murphy with Tex Murphy. Um, <laughs> so, so Aaron Carter's Doug Vandergrift, Chris Jones and myself went down to the conference room here at work. And over the course of a few weeks, we spent our lunch times, you know, we got some takeout, sat down, and I was at the helm and we played through the old Tex Murphy games. And when the credits rolled at the end of Pandora Directive, Chris Jones turns to me, he's like, ah, oh, man, wouldn't it be great if we could make that game today? And I was just like, yeah, huh. <laughs> so it was like this, hmm, interesting. So, um. Yeah, that's how the whole idea came about. And when then we realized that it's been 25 years since the original release, uh, we thought, hey, let's do it. That is so, so good to hear. I imagine that uh, we're still in, in the, the feeling out stages of mm -hmm. it. But uh, tell us what you're feeling out right now with this game. Sure. So as I mentioned, we're relying heavily, particularly for the full motion video sequences, on the machine learning process to upscale this so that we can present it at a modern higher definition resolution. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, if we had done this about two years ago, we probably still would have been, you know, it's, it just hadn't quite matured enough at the time. Um, now, luckily backtracking a little bit, um, luckily we actually had access to the tapes to digitize and double cross to actually perform this with, because what a lot of people aren't aware of, I mean, you know, you can see some of the articles on the Big Finish Games website about how we preserve the tapes, but it was actually a bit of an uphill battle. There were two occasions where the entire legacy of Tex Murphy was this close to being thrown in a dumpster. Hmm. And it wasn't until uh, Bjorn Artisan and myself came on board and were working on Tesla Effect, the two VFX guys, that we would spend our evenings or rendering hours at like 2 or 3 a.m. here at the Big Finish Game Studios, just walking around the offices out of boredom 
and we discovered these boxes tucked away in this corner in this dark loft and we opened it up and on the labels there was under a killing moon pandora directive poison pond because that was the original title of overseas right. so it was still called yes. Poison Pond during mm -hmm. filming and so we were just like oh my god these are the original tapes so we pulled open the old hardware and while we would render the visual effects we would dub tapes over and digitize them with the gear that we had at the time and we're so fortunate we did that because when we had done our interim digitization of the content, uh, we packed the, you know, we stacked it all neatly, put them in brand new boxes, labeled them clearly and put them away for safekeeping. And I came back and I found the Overseer tapes. They're in still good condition. I found the Pandora Directive tapes, um, but under Killing Moon, they're history, unfortunately. Someone had actually accidentally tossed them in the trash doing a spring cleanup at the offices so i was thinking thank god we had the foresight during the time that we were making tesla effect to digitize those to some degree um, Matt, i gotta tell you um i have the tapes i was digging <laughs> in the trash uh i was i was stalking outside i saw yep i've got them i tell you what you can have them <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. You had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, it's funny because literally I will still, you will still find me once a month or something, just walking around the warehouse, hoping for a miracle, <laughs> hoping that the box was just like shoved in a corner and not actually thrown out. So yeah, anyway, so, so that was kind of a very long roundabout way of saying that there are many occasions where this never would have been possible had things had not played out to the most ideal of situations that they did. And we had a look at the first outputs of the upscaled footage where we took interlaced 30 frames a second standard definition video and upscaled it to 60 frames a second progressive 4K UHD. And we looked at it and we're just like, oh yeah, this is gonna happen. <laughs> this is definitely good. gonna happen. <laughs> but that's just the video side of things. You know, once we discovered that we can take these tapes and upscale them to that degree and have them look fantastic, uh, we began exploring what else would be involved, um, you know, recreating the levels using a modern game engine, remastering the music, remastering the sounds. So we just spent the next couple of months digging through every archive we could find. What we have now and what we have as a pool to build off is probably the most comprehensive and well-preserved archive of content for the Pandora Directive we could have possibly hoped for. Is there going to be anything extra as of now? Are you kicking things around uh, in there? We, we flagged that idea. Like, you know, we explored that idea a little bit, but what we learned over the past couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, especially through the Poison Pawn experience was, you know, sometimes maybe it is better after all to just remain faithful to the original idea, um, you know, for the Pandora directive, because it is often considered one of Tex Murphy's flagship stories. It was a case of, it was the probably most refined Tex Murphy experience bar none. And to kind of change that formula would possibly do a disservice to the game. That said, you know, we are going to make some adjustments and that is kind of cut back on some things that were frustrations based on feedback. And we're fortunate. We've had 25 years worth of feedback to study and review. So there are a few things that we will cut back on and make a little bit more user-friendly and simple. And, uh, you know, there are other things that worked really well that we'll, you know, build upon and, and take advantage of. But for the most part, it's going to be very faithful from the level design to the mood, to the music, to the style. We're going to keep it fairly faithful. Um, I don't know if you want to mention this or not, uh, but you mentioned there's things that you're going to build upon. Can you give us an example? Um, yeah. So, so, you know, there are some locations that were designed a certain way to adhere to the limitations of the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll provide two examples. One of them is like the Roswell complex, you know, um, you know, an underground complex that, you know, for the most part was really beautifully designed at the time, yes. um, but geometrically simple. You know, you have hallways, you have like pillars. And one of my favorite features of Roswell are those light pillars every few meters and everything. A very nice and quintessential design, but, uh, you know, overall the details were adhering to the limitations of the time. So the things that we'll sort of take advantage of is, you know, how to make something like that creepier, more detailed, more fog, more atmosphere, moodier lighting, um, being a little bit more environmental with your puzzles and your, and your mechanism and your exploration. Um, another such example is Chandler Avenue. Now, the way it was designed at the time, you had, you know, the Ritz Hotel, 
And when you walked into Tex's office, there was a new load. So we would, they would load an entirely new scene because back then you couldn't have all of Chandler Avenue, including the internals, explorable with the memory footprint you were given. But that also means that you could be architecturally incorrect <laughs> with how rooms are laid out. So Texas office, for example, in Pandora Directive is laid out a certain way completely outside of the realm of possibility when you consider the shape of the Ritz Hotel as well. So we've had to do some fine adjustments to actually make Texas office fit properly within the shape of the Ritz Hotel. Now, Doug Vandergrift has done an absolutely fantastic job with that. We consider it a new old limitation <laughs> that we're exploiting to bring Tex Murphy back to life for the modern era. Uh, I guess it's safe to assume now, am I correct, that there probably won't be a, an Under a Killing Moon uh, remastered or re-release? Now that well, it's, I mean, look, to be honest with you, we really have flagged the idea. Now, the biggest limitation with Under a Killing Moon, I'll say from the outset, mm -hmm. is the method in which it was shot. In order to remaster Under a Killing Moon, you'd have to take the original tapes, which no longer exist, but thankfully we do have digital copies of, not as high quality as Pandora and Overseer but they're there. You'd have to upscale those potentially to 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second if we adopt the same methodology. Then figure out a way to loom a key despite the lack of details in the source material mm -hmm. and then potentially rotoscope at 60 frames a second in ultra high definition. You're talking about a gargantuan task, not an impossible task, but a very gargantuan task. So I will say that we've explored the idea in the future mm -hmm. Um, we're not committing to it yet. And, you know, hypothetically, if 25th anniversary Pandora makes millions and millions of dollars, it's absolutely fantastic, reignites the studio, and we can devote a whole bunch of resources to it. Sure, yeah, we'll explore Under a Killing Moon, but for the time being, it will be a technical, huge technical hurdle. But then again, who knows where the artificial intelligence and machine learning will be when we reapproach that when the time comes. It could do That's it all nice. for us. <laughs> Text notes. Text notes. Exactly. He's in the future. Exactly. So, uh, okay. Uh, he's I'm the overseer. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. Over <laughs> you really are a you really are a fanboy. <laughs> you have the right job. Let's talk about time frames. Sure. So, give us what you know, or what you do not know, as of <laughs> now. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit more of the latter than the former, but to be honest with you, um, for full disclosure, to describe where the project is at, it's probably the film equivalent of being in pre-production. Mm -hmm. We're dedicating a lot of time and energy to getting all our ducks in a row, while at the same time kind of getting the computers and the PCs and some of the developers to work. Um, already laying the groundwork for the 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, and once we understand exactly what's involved in putting this all together, once all the resources have been pooled, mm -hmm. we'll be able to commit to a more precise timeline and exactly how much it's going to cost, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Uh, we don't want to come out and say, you know, these are the hard deadlines, these are the costs, because we really don't know that yet. I like to think of it as the 25th anniversary was the time we decided to conceptualize announcement. the idea. <laughs> the announcement, uh, exactly. The We're going to try and get as close as we can, of course, but it all depends on uh, what we can extrapolate from the information and content we have. Okay. Um, again, we're in the, the feeling out stage. Platforms? Yes? No? Um, I believe that adventure games, especially interactive movies and full motion video adventure games, always belonged in the living room. And, you know, it's a shame we haven't been able to bring Tex Murphy to consoles up until this point. And Valiant efforts have been made. I mean, we actually conceptualized and, and commenced attempting to build a version of Tesla effect that would work on consoles. Really? But unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, the funding meant that we could really only focus on the multi-platforms we originally presented in the Kickstarter. Um, but I will say that when we get to the point when we are programming the game, and that'll be my responsibility alongside a handful of other folks at Big Finish Games, that we plan to program it to be as platform and big, uh, sorry, let me say that again, as platform ambiguous as we could possibly imagine, so that the idea of potentially bringing it to consoles is not going to require an extensive uh, rewrite or new approach. So the goal is to prepare it for a potential multi-platform release. But once again, I can only provide a non-committal response to that, but I will say that as a dev, I certainly want to make it as platform ambiguous as possible in the development stage to open the doors. 
so as of now, it's likely that it's going to be coming out uh, on on PC at first, and then depending on success and what, then you can allocate some funds to to pushing it towards uh, towards platforms. Yes, precisely. And there are a lot of options to do that as well. But uh, once again, we uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But it is certainly a desire of mine as a player first and foremost, and then develop developer next. I certainly would love nothing more than to sit and play Tex Murphy with a game controller in my hand on a big screen TV. Now, let's talk about uh, some not so not so good news. Uh, let's actually talk a little bit about uh, Boys and Pawn. Sure. All right. By the way, if you guys like the book, go buy the book. Let me ask you before we get like, is the studio associated with the book? Oh. While they sit, um, you know, separately from the studio per se, they're all part of the Tex Murphy universe as a whole because of Aaron Connors. Okay. So it's part of the Tex Murphy universe. However, that story we have found out is no longer going to be pushed uh, by you folks. Is that correct? Well, sort of going back, the Poison Pawn, um, you know, for full disclosure, you know, everyone at Big Finish Games, myself included, the developers who worked on the game are, you know, very disappointed that the game could not, you know, uh, reach fruition um, within the schedule that we had originally hoped. Um, but just a little bit of context about the project, it always began as a fan-made game. Um, a small group of developers, um, fans primarily, just decided that they were gonna remake Overseer. And at a certain point, you know, Big Finish Games took notice of this project and thought, you know, this is fantastic. We, we sanction and fully support its development and look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. And then over the years, as the game kind of developed, um, you know, was getting better and better. And of course, the Poison Pawn was always going to be a remake of a remake mm -hmm. because, you know, Overseer was a remake of Main Streets and Poison Pawn was going to be a remake of Overseer. So a lot of people were asking the questions. It's just like, you know, why Overseer? And the first response is, well, it's the most difficult to get run on modern computers. But then as the game progressed, uh, the idea was presented and an opportunity was presented that we could possibly add more to the Poison Pawn story to make it a little bit more than just an Overseer a remake so the idea was flagged with the team the fan made team that was making the project uh you know we can actually big finish games can provide additional resources we'll volunteer some time and actually officially support this project by giving you resources to make it something more and uh, all the developers agreed and thought that was a, a good idea at the time um and then eventually as more and more began being added to the game the idea of perhaps even evolving it even further making it kind of like a con canon continuation of the Tex Murphy series was approached and so the developers were like well yeah that seems like a pretty good idea you know we can we can do that and so Big Finish Games started dedicating more resources to the project you know filming some new full motion video sequences Aaron providing additional story elements however as the game kind of evolved from a project that was just a fan-based uh, remake of Overseer on its own to an all-new project as you're aware to go from that to something that has all new story, all new game design, a completely new approach, it's very different, significantly more difficult. A lot more things can go wrong because when it was just an Overseer remake, it's very easy to follow a guide. Overseer is your game design document. Mm -hmm. Just replicate that exactly and you're good to go. But with a new game, it's a little bit more difficult. So what happened was as more of the game started evolving into a new Tex Murphy game and more chefs ended up coming into the kitchen, there was a bit of discomfort among the developers about the direction the game was taking, which ultimately led to some miscommunications, um, some concerns about the direction of the game, some disagreements, um, which eventually resulted in just a, a slowing of momentum and motivation for the game, which was unfortunate because, you know, the development team had done such a wonderful um, job producing the game up until this point. And it was just sad that there were just some discomfort and disagreements among all team members of the direction of the game. And eventually it just reached a point where the motivation and the steam had slowed so much that it just became apparent to, to Chris Jones, Aaron Connors, and the rest of Big Finish Games that uh, perhaps it's better if we handed the reins back to the original development team to do with the project how they see fit, which is why when we made that announcement that you know, we're no longer going to be donating any more resources. 
into what we believe was going to be a new director for the game and a canon continuation. And we're happy to hand it back to the fan developers who had the original vision for the project. And as such, we absolutely wish them the best of luck with however they want to take the project. And while we will no longer continue donating resources to the project, uh, we still sanction it and support it and will um, give it the thumbs up and help in any way possible to help promote the game with whatever form they decide to continue it with. Very good. So uh, you no longer support uh, with your, your time and resources, but however, you still sanction the game. Um, oh, yes. Just, just to clarify, um, so all of the, the resources, the, you know, the writing and the, the video that, uh, that you've put out thus far, you are, however, just saying it's yours. And if Yeah, they, they could do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could do with it uh, how they see fit and take whatever direction they like. And it also, you know, it's it's one of those things where we are so proud of the work that they've done so far. I mean, you know, screenshots have been shared and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just an extremely talented team. Every single one of them uh, did a fantastic job on the project. And we were just as disappointed that ultimately it kind of lost momentum uh, for those reasons. But that said, you know, we just was super proud of what they've done and I'm happy to give the reins back to them and see what they come up with. Well, whether Big Finish is is in the picture or not going forward, uh, we are hopeful that uh, that the game ends up coming out. Lots of sure. time and, and excitement for yes! it. So. Exactly. All right, so... Uh, you know, just a couple of things I can scoop uh, adventure gamers on with regards to the 25th anniversary. Now, uh, going back to the original announcement of the project, one of the things we're also doing is uh, coming good on some of the outstanding incentives for Kickstarter from the uh, Tesla Effect campaign. So at the moment, Aaron Connors and Chris Jones are recording uh, the six new episodes of the Radio Theater, which act as a really good bridge story to uh, some of the Tex Murphy uh, universe. Uh, so they actually sound really, really good. And those will be ready soon-ish. Uh, another one that we're actually exploring is uh, this guy here. So one of the incentives we promised at the time at the Tesla Effect camera, I'm trying to hold this so it doesn't get too shiny, it's super glossy, mm -hmm. was an Ultimate Detective big box set. However, at the time when we did the Kickstarter campaign, getting these printed was prohibitively expensive. Uh, it's almost as if the industry stopped making these at some point for that very reason. Um, and that always kind of didn't really sit well with us. We knew people were kind of wanting a big box. And so we actually found someone uh, that has a relatively reasonable price. And we've been playing with the idea of actually printing this. So this is our concept print for the Ultimate Detective box set here. And it's actually a proper big box. They're the exact same dimensions as the other game. So our hope is to be able to, uh, you know, have enough of these made to deliver them to the backers that were entitled to this particular incentive. Uh, we haven't fully committed to getting them all printed yet. We're still playing with the idea of doing this in a cost-effective manner because it is still very expensive to do it. And it was either a case of print these all out or not release the game. Yeah. <laughs> so we chose to release the game, of course. But I just want to show guys that, you know, the wheels are in motion for this particular thing. And our goal is to, uh, you know, deliver these to people and perhaps make them available further down the line for anyone else as well, uh, much further down the line to get those who are entitled to this the time to enjoy it first and foremost. That is awesome. Beautiful, beautiful box there. Beautiful shiny sheen there. And uh, allow me to be the first to, uh, to meme you and say, take my money <laughs> for, for when it gets down the line, as you had mentioned. Super yes. excited. Um, and in terms of a scoop with regards to the Pandora Directive 25th anniversary, um, but I will say that um, based on some of our early composite tests, um, one of the things that Adrian Carr is absolutely the most excited about is the fact that, um, and this is related to the music too, you know, we're going to re-edit and recut the 25th anniversary of the Pandora Directive to be as cinematically close to the original as possible. Uh, but where Adrian Carr is most excited is having the resolution and the latitude 
to punch in and frame shots and, and, cor and correct perspectives and things like that. Maybe even use alternative takes that were presented a little bit better or with a little bit more emotion. Uh, so that's one of the big surprises that we hope to provide people with what we would consider a definitive or director's cut version of the Pandora Directive full motion video. And related to the music, you know, we're going back to the original sessions, not only for the walk around MIDI music and getting those resampled with, uh, you know, much more convincing instrumentation, but uh, for every song, every song, sorry, every piece of music that featured as part of the Pandora Directive soundtrack, there were actually various versions made because when the soundtrack needed to be prepared for the full motion video in the game, it had to adhere to a very heavily stifled and reduced dynamic range and stereo image. So a lot of considerations needed to be made for it to fit on the medium. However, the studio sessions are just beautiful. They're wide, they're dynamic, etc. So we're not just going into the original music and just, you know, turning up the volume and widening the stereo image. We're actually going to the original stems and heightening the instrumentation and increasing its dynamic range to actually make it sound fantastic. So from those two fronts, uh, we want to let people know that we're extremely excited um, and we will be showing you guys and we're happy to, uh, you know, help Adventure Gamers uh, be the first to see this content, uh, some of the actual composite tests and music compositions from the upcoming game. Hopefully to get the, uh, the hype train going so we can finally figure out exactly uh, the direction this game could take. All right. Tex Murphy. Is there a chance that we get another chapter in the future? I mean, we know Chris and Aaron are, are they're still putting out some, putting some stuff. They're still together. Everything's going well. Tell us about Tex in the future. Uh, well, yeah, we've we've always wanted to. I mean, especially Chris and Aaron wanted to see Tex Murphy, the Tex Murphy series, um, continue new stories and eventually reach, you know, the climax that Aaron has, has created for the series. I mean, Aaron is constantly writing. He's got, uh, you know, the Romanov Enigma, which he's drafting up at the moment, uh, which continues the Tex Murphy universe. There are other projects that Chris and Aaron have worked on, such as the radio theater that add additional context to the stories and bridge mm -hmm. ideas, etc. As for when we could see a brand new Tex Murphy, the reality is it's it's a very expensive process to make video games, um, mm -hmm. especially so ones that meet the ambition that Chris Jones and Aaron Connors have for the Tex Murphy series. We understand it would do the series a disservice to do any of it half-baked. And so, you know, in the interim, creating a 25th anniversary Pandora directive to give the fans something while also, you know, keep the spark ignited for the Tex Murphy series and potentially give us uh, both technical and financial avenues to explore concluding the Tex Murphy universe is something that we're paying a lot of close attention to. And Chris Jones said it himself, you know, I'm not getting any younger. We want to see if we can get this conclusion uh, done as soon as possible. But once again, it's all about approaching it the right, right way that's, um, you know, financially and logistically plausible. But he has written a conclusion, Correct. He is writing the conclusion. Yes. Writing a conclusion yes. for the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which possibly financially, if all things go, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but uh, if all things work out without a half-baked project, we could possibly see another uh, a, another game in the future. So Yes. That awesome. is the hope. Fingers crossed. So uh, where can we follow the development of the remastered Pandora Directive? Uh, well, we've been keeping a pretty concise blog of its progress on the Big Finish Games website. Mm -hmm. So it's just bigfinishgames.com. And then there's a subsection of news where all the updates come out. And of course, there's social media. Uh, those links are also available in the footer of the website. So you can follow on Twitter and Facebook, any social media platform that you desire. And all of those links will be in the description and will be on AdventureGamers.com uh, columns when, when this comes out. So make sure you check that out there. Matt, thank you so much. I speak for myself. I speak for AdventureGamers.com and definitely for all of the copious amounts of Adventure Game fans who have grown up with Chris and Tex. Chris, 
Aztecs playing Under a Killing Moon, Pandora Directive, and all of the wonderful Texa Murphy games. We appreciate you. And we really, really appreciate all the players and fans as well. For Matt, for Adventure Gamers, we will see you in the next video.